Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Escaping Free to Play Without Paying $11. This is part 2 in the series, if you haven't seen part 1, I definitely recommend you go check that out. Link will be in the description and in the comments, you just have to scroll down a little bit. Today I'm going to be continuing the theme of making money in free to play while progressing my account. Let's get started. Here is the stats, this is where we left off last time, 20 combat stats, 40 range, 33 magic, 34 hit points, 47 mining, 36 smithing. And the bank value is just under 1 million GP, so we need about 2.5 to 3 million more GP before we can get a bond. We are 33 magic so we can use telegrab and hypothetically do one of the best money makers in free to play which is telegrabbing Zamorok wines, but back in summer they reworked how players can get the Zami wine. The wizards, the Zamorok wizards or priests or whatever whatever they're called, Zamorok monks I think maybe, on the ground floor of the Chaos Temple where the wine is found, now attack you when you telegrab wine and they also reduce your magic level. But they added a second floor where that doesn't happen, it happens more like the original where you don't get attacked, you just get the wine, but it requires 500 total level, something we don't have and something we should get. So let's get it. I spent a lot of time at the Hill Giants in the last video, so I'm not going to go into detail. They're just an okay way to train combat and make a little bit of cash because they drop big bones and roots and ruins that you can sell in the Grand Exchange for a decent amount of GP. And I'm going to train here until I get 40 magic. The reason for that is because, as I mentioned earlier, telegrabbing Zami Wines on the ground floor now reduces your magic level. So the higher your level, the better. There it is, 40 magic. Now let's go test out pre-500 total level telegrabbing Zami Wines. I don't hold out much hope. For those of you that don't know, the Zamorok Wines are located to the north of Falador, right next to Goblin Village. It's in this, like, sort of temple. The Chaos Temple, I believe it's called. So it looks like there's bots running in to grab the Zami Wines as it spawns and then run out because the Zamorok enemies don't follow you outdoors. It looks like when they telegrab they stand in between these two sets of candles so that the enemies that are near the door get safe spotted behind the candles. It's actually pretty smart. I could actually just stand here and telegrab them. Sadly though, my stats are still being reduced even without being attacked by a single enemy. So I brought some wizard mind bombs which increase your magic level by two I believe. If you're below 500 total level, doing Zami Wines is not worth it. There's only one wine that spawns that you can grab, and there's a bunch of bots competing you for it, you keep getting attacked, you have to bring food and wizard mind bombs, which are a pain to get. It's not worth doing, you don't get much XP. The gold per hour isn't that great because of the amount of bots and stuff doing it at the same time. If you're below 500 total level, Let's not do Zami Wines, let's continue to progress the account while making money to 500 total level, then we can do Zami Wines to make a bunch of GP. There are hobgoblins located on this sandy, <laughs> sandy peninsula and they're actually not too bad to kill. I wanted to train more combat and instead of doing the thing I've done a billion times which is fight cows or hill giants, I decided to come to the hobgoblins and try it out. They drop ruins and limport roots I believe. At the time of this recording, limport roots are actually bouncing between like 800 and 1000 GP each, so it's not too bad. Sadly my melee stats aren't that great so I don't think it's worth it for me to be killing hobgoblins right now. I have 20 attack, strength and defense. Maybe once I get ruin armor and I can take their hits more, I can come back here and test it out, but with mithril armor I take way too much damage, the trips don't last very long, although I made 6k GP in my one inventory which only took like between 5 and 10 minutes, it's not too bad as a way to train combat and make money, but the bank is so far away, it's in Falador, and I could teleport there but it's still a hefty run back, a pretty long run back, so I think hill giants are currently still worth it for me, not hobgoblins, although hobgoblins are a decent way to train combat, make money if you're bored of hill giants. One thing I never do when trying to make money is bury the big bones. Those are worth like 200, 300 GP each and they only give 15 prairie experience and free to play. They're not really not worth burying. But I do want 500 total level to be able to do the fastest way of telegrabbing wines and make a good amount of money. So for this one time only, I'm going to be burying my big bones. As you can see, I've already got 10 prayer from doing this. I'll probably do it for a few more levels and then stop and start selling them again. Okay, I got 14 prayer. That's where I'm going to stop. Now it takes too long. It takes too many bones to uh, get prayer levels, so I'm just going to start selling them again. I don't think it's worth it anymore. I've also got 33 attack and 30 strength, giving me a total level of 
315. That's not too bad. Now it's time to go train some other skills. All these level 1 skills like fishing and cooking and fire making, wood cutting. It's time to get these bad boys up so I can get 500 total. My bank value has barely changed since the start of this video. But don't worry, by the time of this video's end, my bank value will have doubled. Crafting is a fantastic free-to-play skill. Not only is it easy to train, it's pretty AF cable, meaning you can do other things at the same time, like play another game or watch TV, Netflix, YouTube, etc. And you make money while doing it. At least you make money with the way I'm about to show you, which is crafting gold jewellery. It requires level 5 crafting to start off, so I'm just going to quickly buy some leather and turn it into gloves until level 5. Buy some leather a needle and some thread. Make a bunch of leather gloves, get level 5 crafting, now we can start gold jewellery. The old school wiki has a fantastic crafting guide that shows you tables of each type of crafting so uh, what you're looking at right now is the gold jewellery table. It shows you how to go from level 5 to 99 crafting only making gold jewellery. It tells you how much the materials cost and it tells you how much money you will either make or lose doing it. It also tells you how much materials you need so you can see from level 5 to 6 making gold rings you'll need 8 gold bars then 14 and 123 etc and it goes all the way down to 99. This table is your best friend if you want to do some crafting and free to play to make some money. If you look at the profit slash loss margin of the table you can see that not every gold jewellery crafting method makes you money. For example sapphire amulets, if you'd done sapphire amulets from level 24 to 31 you would lose around 18 kgp. So just don't do that. Just do the thing that's profitable before it, sapphire necklaces, until you unlock something to craft that makes you money again. Just bypass the things that don't make you money. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. There will be a link to this in the description below. And if there's not one, if you go and check, leave a comment to remind me to put it in. We've teleported to Lurnbridge because it's right next to Al Karid, and we need to use that furnace alongside the crafting store to buy the jewellery moulds. Alcred crafting store, gimme gimme. Now with the appropriate moulds and materials in our inventory we can use the furnace to start crafting. I am following the table that I just showed you earlier to get 40 crafting, only making gold jewellery and only doing the things that are profitable. So my total level should jump up by 40 levels and I'll make a little bit of cash doing it. There we go, level 40 crafting, I can now use the crafting guild which has gold ore in it, which is an okay money making method. And I got it just making sapphire rings. I didn't actually go above making sapphire rings because at the time of this recording, which isn't up to date with the table I showed earlier, uh, sapphire rings were the most profitable thing to craft. But I think right now, as I narrate this, it's emerald amulets unstrung, so... I don't know, you just have to check the table, see what's profitable if you just want to make the most money possible. If I wanted to continue crafting, I would just make emerald amulets until I got the level I was happy with or the amount of money I was happy with. It's a very simple way to make money. Selling all the sapphire rings that I crafted gets me about 900k, but that's not pure profit because obviously I spent a bunch of money buying the materials. My bank value has shot up, though last time you saw it, it was like the same, it was like 1 mil. Now it's 1.14 can't complain. With 40 crafting I have unlocked access to the crafting guild as long as I wear a brown apron, which I'm doing and inside there are 7 gold ore rocks. Mining gold ore, it's a pretty good money making method. I personally don't think it's faster than mining iron ore in a Falador mine and banking it, unless you're over like 60 or maybe even 70 mining, but it's still pretty darn good and it feels good to get a full inventory because they're worth 375 each. So each inventory you're getting like 9 or 10k GP, quite a lot of GP for one inventory of ore. But I don't think it's as fast as mining iron ore. The bank's too far away and even with teleport runes to Falador, which is the closest bank, it still takes a bit too long. However, mining iron ore in the Falador mine, even if there's scorpions nearby, you can get an inventory of iron ore pretty quickly and it's worth about 4 or 5k GP because the ores are worth around 170 or even sometimes 200 GP each depending on the prices and all that, it varies all the time. I did go a little bit more into detail about mining iron ore in the Falador mine in the previous video link below. Now we fishing. We are continuing the total level grind and I'm going to be fishing for quite some time and I'm not going to be fishing in a way that makes me a lot of profit. I mean I can sell the fish that I get, the shrimp and anchovies and trout and salmon that I fish but they're not really worth a lot of GP. I'm not really in this to make money, I'm in this to get the total level so I can eventually make more money. I fished shrimp in Draenor until 22 fishing and I've come here to Alcarid to cook all the shrimp which has gotten me to 23 cooking and 400 
total level. We've only got 100 levels more to go. It sounds like a lot, but when most of your stats are still level 1, it's actually not a lot. With level 20 fishing, I unlocked the ability to catch trout by fly fishing. So I got some feathers, I got my fly fishing rod. We're here at Barbarian Village, and I'm just going to catch some trout and cook them on that fire there. That fire behind me is permanent, never goes away. So I can cook all my trout and just drop them. Shift click drop is a thing, a setting you can enable, and you should if you haven't already. And on mobile, I think there's like a tap to drop button you can enable too. So you can power fish here, just fish it, cook it, drop it, get a bunch of levels real quick. If you like the fishing skill and you want to use it to make money for a bond in free to play, then you can actually do that. There's a method of making money while fishing. Fishing lobsters in Karamja is actually a fairly okay, it's pretty popular money making method. The way it works is that you bring your lobster pot to Port Serum, you take a boat to Karamja, you run to the north side of the island where there is a little pier, you can fish off that pier to catch some lobsters. Once your inventory is filled with lobsters, you can take the boat back to Port Serum and on the docks there's a deposit box where you can deposit all the lobsters, rinse and repeat. Both the raw and cooked lobsters bounce between around 200 and 250 GP each. It's an alright money maker and if you want, Try it out, you need 40 fishing to catch lobsters. Okay, I'm done with fishing, I got 425 total level by getting 35 cooking and 35 fishing. It's now time to level some fire making and wood cutting. I need to buy an axe and a tinder box. And I'm just going to chop the trees around the Grand Exchange until I'm level 30 wood cutting. Because here in the Grand Exchange and at the Varrock Palace, just right next to the Grand Exchange, there's normal trees and oak trees, which are all I need to cut to get level 30. And both normal and oak logs are worth a decent amount of money for how easy it is to gather them. That's because in members they can be turned into planks which are used to train the construction skill, which means the price of normal and oak logs are actually higher than say willow logs and maple logs. So if you're not in a rush to get total levels like I am, it might be worth not training fire making and instead just sell the logs for GP if you want money. There it is, level 30 wood cutting from chopping the oak trees right next to the Varrock Palace between the palace and the Grand Exchange. I also got 34 fire making by burning the logs that I chopped, meaning my total level is now 487. I only need 13 more levels before I can telegram Zami Wines in the upper level where I don't get attacked. I'm going to get the remaining levels from my melee combat stats and the way I'm going to train those is, you guessed it, slaying hill giants like I always do. I'm only 7 attack levels away from being able to wield ruin weapons, more importantly the ruin scimitar which is the best weapon to train combat with, or at least melee combat. It's probably the best weapon you can get in free to play old school runescape. And as as I've done in this video and in the last video when fighting hill giants I just collect all the drops and sell them including the bones because the bones are where the money's at. Hey there's 40 attack you can see in the chat box I just got it that means I can now equip the ruined scimitar. With my fancy new scimitar I have got over 500 total level by training defense on the hill giants. That means we can now telegram Zami Wines with the better method better money. Here we are at the chaos temple ready to telegrab Zami Wines and start making some real cash. As you can see, I've brought both telegrab and teleport to Falador Ruins, I've brought wizard mind bombs to restore my magic level, and I've got some food. And the reason I've brought both mind bombs and food is even though you don't get your magic level reduced or you don't take damage on the top floor when telegrabbing, after telegrabbing the top floor wine, I'm going to descend the ladders, telegrab the wine on the bottom floor, and rinse and repeat. Here is my method in action. I start on the top floor, I telegrab the wine, I wait a couple of seconds, I go down to the bottom floor, telegrab that wine, climb back up, make sure I've got enough HP, make sure I've got the magic level to use telegrab by eating food and drinking wizard mind bombs, and then continue to telegrab the top wine, climb down, telegrab the second wine. After telegrabbing the wine on the bottom floor, I just spam click the ladders until I can go up because there's a bit of a delay, you can't go up instantly. The game lets you take damage from the wizards first before you uh, before you climb back up. And I found this simple yet effective method to be the best. I was warned beforehand not to tell newer players to telegram wines, not even to do it myself because it's so popular that there's lots of bots doing it, there's lots of players doing it and that's true. But with the method I came up with, I don't know if I came up with it first, probably not, it's not exactly a complex method to think of, but telegrabbing the top wine and climbing down, telegrabbing the second wine, even though that reduces your magic level and you get damaged, if you have the bombs and the lobsters, 
It's not that big a deal. You just have to set up your inventory beforehand with some food and some wizard mind bombs that you buy from the tavern in Falador. Do not buy them from the Grand Exchange. The price is extremely high. It's like a billion times more expensive out the Grand Exchange. It's actually a good money maker to buy mind bombs and sell them on the Grand Exchange. But for the time it takes for one wine to respawn, I get two chances of getting it. So even if there's a bunch of people, either in the top floor or a bunch of bots on the bottom floor, if I go for both of them, I'm getting twice as much wine as anyone else because I never saw a single person do this. Not a single soul was climbing up, climbing down. I don't know why, maybe they are now because this was a couple of days ago, like a week ago. But for whatever reason, no one else was doing this. Maybe because the bots aren't scripted to do this method, I don't know but I found it effective and you should definitely try it out. I was completing a full inventory between like 8 and 10 minutes. That includes setup time, banking time, and each inventory you can get up to 50k GP because the wines are worth 2,000 coins each, which means you'll be making between 250k to 300k GP per hour. And I think 300k GP is a max GP per hour rate you can get in free to play. There's nothing else that goes beyond that, at least not to my knowledge. But there are things that compare to it, which we will cover in the next episode. So after over three hours of doing this method of telegrabbing Zami wines, I have collected over 400 Zamorok wines and my bank value is now like one GP below two million, as you can see at the top there. Hopefully once I've sold the wine and a bunch of other stuff, that bank value hits the two mil mark. So let's head to the Grand Exchange and find out. Over two million GP. After selling everything I had in my bank that I could sell anyway, these things remaining are untradeable. I have over 2 million GP. I've made a free-to-play account and I've genuinely just played through it and made money and I've got 2 mil sitting in my bank from free-to-play. I'm over halfway to getting a bond. And these are my stats. Nothing incredible. They're all fairly decent stats for free to play I guess maybe except my melee stats I want to get those up a little bit more but there's not really much point in doing so right now in the last video I got criticized a little bit only by a few people that what I'm doing is a bad idea showing people how to make money showing free players what I'm doing to make money because it's boring and you'll scare away free players now that's true doing the things I'm doing one after the other non-stop just grinding out it's pretty darn boring unless you love a good hefty grind if you're a new player, don't do what I'm doing as a step-by-step -step guide on how to play free-to-play. Go do quests, go meet other players, go explore, do all the things that you want to do. Then if you want to make money to get a bond, do some of the money-making methods I showed in this video or the last video. Don't do it all at once, because they're correct. It is a little bit boring. Goodbye. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching that video. I really appreciate it. If you want to subscribe, you can hit this profile picture icon or just below the video there's a subscription button. Make sure you hit the bell too so you know when I upload new videos. And if you want to watch my most recent video, make sure you click on the top right there. It takes you to my most recent video created and uploaded to the YouTube channel. And if you're in the mood to binge watch a bunch of RuneScape videos, that playlist in the bottom right has over 200 of them.